everyone and welcome to my channel. So this week I'm going to be talking about what it was like to apply for the NSF GRFP fellowship specifically. So for those of you who don't know, it's a graduate level fellowship where you get funding for grad school, notably a PhD if you're in a PhD program. And you apply to this either as an undergrad or during one of your first two years of graduate school. You can apply for it twice and due to a lot of great advice I got, I was actually really lucky to get it as an undergrad. So I want to give it back and share the tips that I learned with all of you. So right now you're looking at a TV, but this is actually my laptop. I actually decided that for grad school, it'd be really convenient for me to do a lot of my reading on a bigger screen. So I have set up a, I guess more high tech setup than I'm used to working on. So apologies if there are any issues with it. Oh, let me straighten that out. There we go. I think that's straight. If not, sorry. All right. So let's start off by just actually navigating to the NSF GRFP website. So this is what it looks like. And immediately you'll just see a lot of information. You have the actual uh, application, which is on Fastlane, which is a website that I kept bookmarked for a very long time. Under Fastlane, what you'll see are the deadlines for each field. So that's something that's really important to check before. There's not just one application deadline. And for the really lucky physicists and chemists and math people that have it on the 26th. I'm very jealous because I, as a life scientist, had the first deadline. So what you're going to want to do is create an account. Um, that would be your begin a fellowship application. Hey, it looks like it's bigger. Begin a fellowship application button right here. So if you saw my previous video where I talked about the importance of the mission statement, it's actually true. NSF also encourages that you read the mission statement. And for NSF, it's not called the mission statement because NSF is a very big organization, but NSF GRFP has the program solicitation. So right here, it says that prospective applicants must read, oops, prospective applicants must read the program solicitation. So that is gonna be the first thing you'll want to do. And as you can tell, I don't know if you can see, but this bar is he very, very small, which means there's a lot to go through. Um, and they have the deadlines for the next few years, which is kind of them, but not super relevant. And so what you have here is the title of the program, NSF GRFP, and the synopsis of the program. So here, right off the bat, you have something that you can work with. And what it says is the purpose of the NSF Graduate Research Fellowship Program is to help ensure the vitality and diversity of the scientific and engineering workforce of the United States. The program recognizes and supports outstanding graduate students who are pursuing full-time research-based master's and doctoral degrees in science technology, engineering and mathematics, or in STEM education. The GRFP provides three years of support for graduate education of individuals who have demonstrated their potential for significant research achievements in STEM or STEM education. NSF especially encourages women, members of underrepresented minority groups, persons with disabilities, veterans, and undergraduate seniors to apply. So now you know why I had you read this. There's a lot here that they want you to tackle that, you know, is not just about talking about yourself. For example, the goal is to ensure the vitality and diversity, right? But what it says is that the GRP provides three years of support for the graduate education of individuals who have demonstrated their potential for significant research achievements. So what that means is the money is going to go to people who show that they have potential for this. So that this part right here is what you want to show throughout your application. So if we look through it a little more, there's some contact information, um, award information, they talk about your eligibility, and this is something you're definitely going to want to read, especially if you're already a graduate student. For example, something that trips people up is this part right here. Have never earned a master's, professional, or bachelor master's degree in any field unless returning to graduate st study after an interruption of at least two years. There's a part about the number of times individuals may apply. You can apply maximum of twice. You can apply as an undergrad senior, which is when I applied. 
and in addition to that, you can apply once as a graduate student, either in your first or your second year. So that means you have to apply by second year of graduate school. So we're going through the due dates again, and here you have just tons of information about NSF GRFP and what they're funding. So if you feel like you needed to get a better idea of what it is that they're funding in order to write your application, that is important. Another huge thing that trips people up is that you, if you are applying for the life sciences or actually any, any of these, you're not eligible if you're going to be enrolled in a program. Oops. You're not eligible if you're going to be enrolled in a program that is focused on clinical practice, counseling, social work. And that is actually also true of people pursuing life sciences PhDs. NSF does not want you to submit anything biomedically related. They will actually disqualify your application and not give you comments if you submit a biomedical proposal. Biomedical proposals go to NIH, so that is really important to think about when you are writing your statement. So now, let's keep going. You have the application preparation, and here is, in my video, I mentioned formatting guidelines. These, this is something you want to copy and paste into your Word document, because they're not going to be flexible about this. They have detailed exactly how you need to write it, so you have to keep this. The particular thing about NSF is you have two things. You have to get three letters of recommendation, you need to have a personal relevant background and future goals statement, and you need to have a graduate research plan statement. So to break this down, this right here is a personal statement, and this right here is a research plan or a research proposal. So something that's super important about NSF, and you really need to think about both of these things, is you have to address intellectual merit and broader impacts under separate headings, which means you have to explicitly state, this is the intellectual merit of my statements and this is the broader impact of my statements. You have to be clear. And while I've seen some successful applications that don't have them under separate headings, it says it right here that you should. So you just don't want to make this hard for yourself. Just listen to what they say. Just real quick, they have um, information for reference letter writers and make sure that those writers get um, the letters of rec in on time. They have instructions for those writers as well, so make sure you send that to them. And then you keep going. They have something about interdisciplinary applications if that's what you're doing and they have a lot of like budget information, et cetera, et cetera. So um, they have a lot of details here about responsible conduct. I'm going to leave that to you guys to read um, because it is a lot, but I want to actually show you very quickly how my, what my application looked like so you can see the separation broader impacts versus intellectual merit. So here's my statement, and I'm showing this to you out of the goodness of my heart, but no, actually this is already available online if you would like to take a look at it. Um, I would really recommend reading into it very in depth. There's tons of jargon and you have to write this for a scientist in your field. I applied to physiology, so I've written this as a physiologist. And what I talked about was hormonal regulation of ketone bodies in prolonged fasting northern elephant seal pups, which should sound incredibly interesting to you because it is. But basically the way I divided my statement was I had a background and rationale, so all of this is background and rationale for my project. And I have a much longer one than a lot of other applications. Each statement is going to have its own organization and just because my background and rationale is huge does not mean that yours has to be just as long as mine. Just write what you need to write in order to get the point across. So yeah, I have this really long rationale and then at some point I actually underlined the importance of my state of my study. You don't have to underline, you don't have to bold, but I really like to draw the reader's eye to something that's very important, especially after they read through like tons of jargon, so they can really see that I addressed something very important. 
And so right here is where I actually propose my study and my hypothesis is also underlined. Again, you don't have to do that and a lot of winning ones didn't, a lot of winning ones did. There you go. So then what I did was I broke it down into two aims and my aims are incredibly short. And again, I underlined the most important part of those aims, but if you actually look at sample essays, there are aims that are incredibly long. So again, write it as needed for your particular application. Then I had the methods, which just very briefly talked about what I was proposing to do, and anticipated results, which is what the possible results I could get were. Then I have the intellectual merit and broader impacts right here. And yeah, in addition to all of that, I talk, I again talk about how important this study is, but also the impacts that it would have on biology as a whole. And then for broader impacts, that's more like, what are you going to do for the, what is this study going to do for the community? So I talk about what I would do. And then I talk about the feasibility of my project because I am proposing to work with animals that are endangered and you know, the people who would support me in this. And then lastly, I do have my citations right here and they are in a smaller font. Um, and from what I've seen, that seems to be totally okay to have the references in a smaller font as long as everything else is in the normal font and follows the guidelines. So now I just want to mention a couple resources for when you're applying. I have a website that has my NSF application and it, and it has the video linked um, where I talk about the essentials of winning any scholarship and fellowship and this video will also be linked in that vid in that in this website when um, I create the video. I have my proposal here if you're interested in seeing it. I also have my personal relevant background statement um, which lets you see like what is the best way to write that. I have my reviews if you're interested in what the reviewers had to say, but the thing I really want to point out is in these additional resources. These two websites were amazing and critical to helping me out. Um, the first one I want to point out is Alex Lang's website, um, and if you go it's alexhunterlang.com slash NSF fellowship, I will link it down below. And what you see is he has an outline of the basic fellowship and a lot of the stuff that I covered already, but something that's incredibly helpful in addition to all of his criteria and such and his advice is he has a compilation of uh, successful applicants and what year they apply. So actually all of these are 2017. Um, and no 2018 people sharing, I guess. But what you can see is when people won the S when people won the fellowship and they link to their proposals and some of them share their ratings with you. Another really great website is Mallory P. Ladd's NSFGRFP Research Advice. So this is a very comprehensive page about the NSFGRFP um, and she just gives really great advice about like a suggested timeline. I didn't follow this timeline completely, but it was very helpful, especially if you're a structured person. And she has phenomenal advice. Again, read the entire solicitation, read the mission statement. Um, and, and I just found this very helpful. So I want to thank both Mer Mallory Ladd and Alex Lang for putting up such incredible websites. If you have any simple questions, I actually encourage you to go to Grad Cafe. It's like a uh, college confidential of sorts, um, and you can ask any questions. I think it's under the bank. Um, you can ask any questions about the application and get advice from other people who either want it or are applying as well. So yeah, thanks for watching and best of luck on your application.